So, fresh new Mac Mini here, I'm gonna do a SSD swap on it, cause you know, I didn't wanna spend 200 bucks for the person who wanted it to get the SSD, cause those are the price. So I got a $100 one that happens to be bigger. Yeah, it's not a PCIe one, but realistically, while PCIe SSDs are like four times faster on paper, for most things like opening programs, it's a second or two faster, and I'd argue if you're buying a fairly low end system, using it for office tasks, an SSD is nice, but I'd argue you don't need a top-of-the-line one. I haven't opened a new Mac Mini. Look at it! It's a Mac! I'm still gonna complain about these being 2014 models, but still selling them in late 2016, but... Here it is. Apple. Pulls out. And first big complaint, they got rid of the twist-off bottom and the removable, user-swappable RAM, but you can still pry these off. You have to kind of get the right tool in there, but you can pop them off. I'm going to have to do that to put the SSD in it. Also, my big complaint, they had a model here with an optical drive. They got rid of the optical drive. It's the same thickness. There's still a spot in here for an optical drive. Um, but there is no optical drive, which annoys me. So that's fantastic, because it's just an empty space. If you look in here, these are horribly space optimized, and it comes with a power cable and a manual and stuff I don't care about. Yeah, so time to peel off the packaging, and I'm going to make an image of it, so I'll show you how I do imaging for these guys at least. Here's the initial setup process. So I could just reinstall OSX on the SSD, but that's kind of annoying because I want the pre-installed program. So push the power button, hold down T. I believe T works on this keyboard. And I believe it's running, yeah, power LED's on, it does its bong thingy. And since these are connected via Thunderbolt, I should fairly soon see something here that says, yep, here it is. Oh, it wants me to use it as a backup drive, I don't want to use it, so... Here, it's going to complain about stuff, but... I think this is running 1012 on here. Um, disk utility. So I want disk utility in here, and I think they broke. They made it annoying in the new versions. I don't, I don't. I want to put 10.9 on something, but I don't. So, um, image from Untitled. Okay, so I can make an image on here. I'm gonna put it on a network drive because those are convenient, and then I can put that image back on it. Probably using DD if I can manage to do it, or I'm going to see how I do it. But I'm just going to make an image this way. And then I have to take them apart once I do that. So I'm going to mount my network drive now. Peters don't agree with this idea that I think that should be easy. So essentially, this guy has 1012 beta and 1011 on it. 1012 beta crashes every time I try to do this in disk utility. 1011 doesn't let me because it says I have a network drive of 4 terabytes available. And it says there's not enough space available for the disk image. So, out comes good old DD, which means I'm making a one terabyte image, which is on a fairly slow network drive, but it's big. So, this is going to take a while. So now it's time to get to work on it again. I went and ordered this because I needed a T6 security bit to get it open, and I realized that my iFixit kit that has a T6 bit, but it's not the security one, it's the standard one, which is darn annoying. Um, where is that iFixit? Here it is. So essentially how I found to open it, you're supposed to use the smudger thingy, which is like fancy and I don't have one, I'm probably going to get one one day, because I just keep working on computers all the time. But really, I think there's a piece right here, I want to say it's right in the back, yeah, it's right here. You can pop this guy open, and then there's two more in the front here, there it goes. I'm trying to do this with one hand, don't do that, it's not for me now. And then the rest of it pops off, and then you have 6T6 security bits, because there has to be a new type of security bit every time there's a new Mac that comes out. So, finding T6 security, I think this is a T6 right here. I think this guy goes down T4. Oh boy, this doesn't want to come out. Now we have all the screws out, so this top piece kind of lifts off. There is probably a wireless cable in here, because of the there is, and it's kind of hidden out of the way. It shouldn't break it like that. And that's a horrible use of space right here. If you notice, I'll, I can get basically my whole hand right in here, which I yeah, shouldn't do. Also, they got rid of the upgradable memory and put a fan here. I think the upgradable memory, I want to say, was right here. Yeah, and in the old ones, they still shoved the drive back here because they had one of the old ones. 
Man, I've worked on one too many Macs for the life of me. Um, essentially, you have to take out this fan, you have to take out a lot of things. You have to take out this fan, and then you're going to get two poles to pull it back, pull out the board, and then the hard drive basically pops right out, and then we put the SSD in. So let's pull some stuff out. So I removed it all off camera. Basically, motherboard, you have to put the thingy into the two little holes next to the heatsink. It pulls out pretty easily. Make sure you take off all the connectors, and then you take out the power supply by taking out these two screws, and then rotating the plug, and it pulls out. Does a good eye fix it. Yeah, I did it. Kind of following. This is the hard drive tray. In order to remove the hard drive, Basically, you have to get rid of pretty much everything. Lovely. Um, and then four more screws and the actual drive comes out. It's an HDST drive. Eh, I was curious what Apple included. When I said space isn't used very well in here, I wasn't even joking. There's a good half inch between the board and the top of the case that's completely unused here. Because you're supposed to have an optical drive in it when they designed it. But they don't have optical drives anymore because you don't need those. And then there's an SSD that can go here, but eh, it's a proprietary PCIe SSD. I probably would have just got the adapter if it was an M.2, but no, Apple doesn't want to use M.2s. Kind of curious if they sell parts for that SSD bracket and how much they want to put online, but uh, I just got a standard SATA drive, which is right here. Um, here you go. Here's a SATA drive I got. Boring. The cheapest reasonable drive I could find. It's a OCZ. Um, so 480 gig, works fine. I used super duper to put the SSD on it, so I, 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 I finished using DD. So Mac OS X, for whatever reason, puts the recovery image. So EFI partition is always first, but eh, it's an EFI FAT32, fat I think it's 200 megs normally. Then there's a 650 megabyte um, Mac OS X recovery image, so that's like the hit this button to recover your system thing. And then this is, and then you have this guy, and this guy just plugs right in, screws in from the side. You don't, vibration mounts don't matter, but it has them. It's a surprisingly well-engineered system. I'm going to give them that, but it's just, I don't like it for my personal use and like, of systems. Like, they definitely go into detail, because, like, these are optical audio outputs here. These aren't just headphone jacks, these are optical audio out jacks. Yeah, and they have, like, rubber-mounted hard drives and stuff. You don't see that on a lot of the cheaper ones, but, I mean, eh, it's still... Oh. It's like a 700 bucks. Time to swap the drive. And here it is. It's all put packed together with the SSD in it. The hard drive's here. It's a WD drive. Eh, HGST branded though. Um, time to put it in, plug it in, get the OS all set up, update it, and then probably you can delete something in single user mode so it gives you a fresh setup thing for a new person. Time to do that. Let's plug it into a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So the system's been cloned over, but it's still running on my personal laptop drive here. You can see system sitting here. Runs relatively cool and quiet. Um, actually runs almost silent, which is kind of nice. Yeah, um, data cloned over fine. I moved all this stuff. The annoying thing is you have to take everything out, as I showed in the earlier videos. But it pops together, didn't miss a screw. Fairly easy if you've worked with computers a good amount to do it. Um, yeah. What else? Um, you know, temps wise and performance, it's meh at the best. It's about a MacBook Air ish performance or MacBook Pro 13 or just a generic dual core. Um, you know, I was having fun testing performance. It runs, um, I tested CSGO, it runs at about 40 FPS no matter what settings on Mac OS X at least. I haven't put Windows and Linux on it, no, I'm not going to do that, I don't care. Um, TF2 runs at 1080p medium just fine. At high, it crashes because it runs out of video memory. Cinebench, as I'm running here, I've ran it before, it gets about 280. Essentially, do you need a cheap web browsing system that runs Mac OS X? Eh, it's a reasonable buy if you need a new system. Otherwise, stay far, far away from it. Yeah. Cl runs fine on the S external S on the new internal SSD. Fairly zippy on the SSD, but... So that's about it. Thanks for watching this little um, hard drive swap in the systems. And stay tuned for more computer videos.